We have a number of bears that we're tracking with radio tracking collars throughout the state. So each winter, we go in and we use the collars to locate the bears in their dens. And then we sneak in as quietly as we can to identify what type of den it is. And then later in the year, we will then sneak in as quietly as possible and try to tranquilize the bear. Ideally, she goes to sleep right in the den. Um, we can then pull her out and we can evaluate her condition. We can refit her collar, change out her collar if need be. And then we can pull out the cubs as well and we can determine their size, their sex. And again, these are all pieces of information that we use to model the bear population and make the management decisions we do uh, on the bear population. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. One is to document the survival rate and the causes of mortality of female black bears in Massachusetts. And through that, we can model and determine what is happening with our overall bear population, um, whether it's stable, it's decreasing, it's increasing. But we can also monitor by going into the dens each winter, monitor the cub production, and then going in the dens the following winter, the cub survival. So again, it's another piece of information we need in order to be able to monitor and model the growth of the population. So we're getting really fine habitat use and movement data from these bears so we can see how they are interacting with these developed areas, how often they're in neighborhoods and backyards, finding food, bird feeders, garbage, and other food sources around our homes, how often they're using natural areas, how they're moving between these developed areas. Black bears aren't inherently aggressive towards people. When people do get injured by bears, it tends to be um, because they are spending a lot of time in and around houses, near homes, apartment complexes, but they also come into our yards. And they come into our yards most often because we are choosing to have food readily available for wildlife around our homes. And bears are smart animals, so if they can come to a backyard and feed at a bird feeder, the bear empties the bird feeder, someone fills it, the bear can come back the very next day and get that meal again. Or they break into a shed in order to access the bird seed that's stored there. And now they're starting to become a nuisance bear. And people have the right to kill a bear that's causing property damage in Massachusetts. So these bears that learn these behaviors often end up dead as a result. And that's why we're constantly trying to get the message out to people to, to clean up the foods around their, their homes, their neighborhoods, their towns. Um, so bears aren't attracted to these places to try to prevent any of those occurrences from happening. If anyone sees a bear den in their backyard or a bear den anywhere, leave it alone. If it is a sow with newborn cubs in it, a disturbance around the den can cause her to leave and potentially abandon the cubs. So give it space and you just don't want to harass the animals. You never want to approach wild animals. Give us a call, let us know, and that gives us the ability to evaluate the situation.